Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the principles of robot design. Alrighty, first I recommend the box robot design. Here's what I mean. As you can tell by its blocky shape, this is a box robot. Every side of it is covered by interconnected walls. Box robots have numerous advantages. First, they can square up on the field's walls, which will vastly increase the consistency of your robot's movement. Second, the walls give the robot structural support for the wheels. If the wheel's axle was simply connected to a motor, oftentimes the weight of the robot would bend the axle, causing inconsistent driving. If the wheel's axle was connected to the motor on one end and the wall on the other, there is no way that the axle could bend, which means that the robot would drive better. Second, your robot should be as compact as possible while still being sturdy. Smaller robots are able to move more freely on the field without running into things. For example, this is a very space efficient motor placement design for the box robot. As you can see, by placing the large motors in a backwards orientation and the medium motors under them, a lot of space is saved. Third, I strongly recommend a pinless attachment system. I've already made a detailed video about this, so for more information, check out my fastest attachment changes in FLL video. However, I'll explain it simply here. Basically, the axles on the attachment slide into the holes on the robot. And as this happens, this gear on the attachment interlocks with this 12 tooth gear on the robot. From then on, the attachment is held on by gravity. This system makes attachment changes extremely quick, no matter how big the attachment is. When choosing wheels, you should think about two things, thickness and size. You always want to choose wheels that are thin, so that your robot will be as thin and compact as possible. You also want to find the wheel size that is the perfect balance between speed and precision. Large wheels will make your robot fast, but less precise, since they amplify the inaccuracies of the LEGO motor. Small wheels will minimize these inaccuracies, but make your robot very slow. Keeping all of this in mind, in my experience, there are two wheels that are the most suitable for robots. The first wheel is a 43.2mm wheel with a 62.4mm tire. The second wheel, which is the one that my robot uses, is a 61.6mm motorcycle wheel with an 81.6mm tire. Both of these wheels are very thin, and both of them are relatively fast and accurate. However, even though I have used the motorcycle wheels in most of my robots, I recommend avoiding them. Many people, including me, have noticed that the rubber on the tires of these wheels tends to rub off extremely easily, resulting in inaccurate driving after some time. For sensors, in my experience, there should be two color sensors spaced out at the front corners of the robot. This allows the robot to line square and line follow, which are very important to navigating the field. Line squaring programs align the robot to be perfectly perpendicular to a line, and they require two color sensors that are placed as far away from each other as possible. Line following programs drive the robot along the edge of a line, and they can use either one sensor or two sensors. That is why I recommend two color sensors in a spaced out configuration. The most useful sensor is the gyro sensor. The gyro sensor is important because it helps teams drive to missions accurately and turn accurately. We have all seen the inaccuracies of EV3 motors. For example, many times the robot will not drive in a straight line when we want it to. Using a gyro-assisted driving program fixes this problem, since the gyro will automatically correct the robot's errors. Since gyros measure angle, they are also very useful in making precise turns. Using the gyro is the easiest way to navigate the field consistently. Cable management is also very important for robots. You don't want your robot's cables to be interfering with motors, attachments, or missions, since that could cost you points. To make sure that your cables are just tight and controlled, I recommend put building a cable rack under the EV3 brick. Extra cable length will be stored there so that your cables are the correct length. Now let's talk about my robot. As you can see, my robot is a box robot. The chassis is 21 units long and 19 units wide, which is a compact design. For the wheels, I chose the motorcycle wheels because they balance speed and accuracy and are very thin. At the front of my robot, I have my two color sensors spaced out. My gyro sensor, which is right here, is facing forward and in between the two large motors, minimizing gyro drift. And as you can see, my cables are not in the way. I hope this video helped your team out. 
If you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe for more tutorials coming out in the future about completing FLL replay missions.